I, I feel like God has, I think the one thing that in my own spiritual life is the most crippling thing in the world for me is to become overly comfortable, to become overly um, familiar, to be, to make things that are holy, to treat them as if they were um, not special. And so when you, when you, when you hear uh, a Navajo, per, a, a person who has grown up being a shepherd, talk about the good shepherd, it brings this, this whole new side of the picture to me. And it challenges much of the, of the it challenges the images that, that I contrived when I heard stories about the good shepherd. Well, I don't even like the term liberal and I don't like the term conservative. Um, I think I'm more conservative than most conservatives and I think I'm more liberal than most liberals if you want to know the whole truth. I, I, I still believe that what marks us as Christians is not our doctrine in terms of a doctrinal statement. What it is, what marks us as a Christian is our love for people. And if you love people, then you respect them. And when someone who comes from a different religion, who comes from even a false religion, speaks, you listen respectfully to them because no one was ever won into the kingdom of God through snobbery. We only come to know Christ through love. And and I, I really believe that. I think our real doctrine is that doctrine that that is is born out in our character. I think you can you can profess the Apostles' Creed until Jesus comes back, and if you don't love somebody, you never were a Christian. You don't write because the world has need of your music. You write because you have a need to to make order, to organize things. And if you're a musician, you express that very human, very common need by making music. If you're a baker, you do it by making bread. It's all the same God. It's all the same goodness. It just expresses itself in different areas. In the, in the evangelical Christian discipleship, model, you find someone that you think is really together as a Christian and then you imitate their life and you learn how to say the prayers that they prayed and you learn how to sing the songs that they sing and you learn how to get up when they get up and go to bed when they get... Very much of the time, it's a very external sort of, of shell to live inside. It's, it's very easy for me to say, okay, well, what books did you read? Let me read those books. What music do you listen to? Let me listen to that music. How can I be like you? And I think that's always, always a mistake. Very seriously, the idea that we are each created uniquely in the image of God and that, that there is a purpose in our being and that you as an individual are an expression that God, that God has made. The idea of spiritual direction is not to tell you how to be, how, not to give you a, a set of rules and a set of ideas and a set of principles to live by. The idea of spiritual direction is to help you discover what God has uniquely created in you and how to allow God then to bring that to life. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a much harder process Maybe more than ever before, 20th century people live without any identity. We live without any sense of being anything other than a consumer, other than something that needs, other than that um, has wants. I mean, and I, I think that it's largely because we live on sensation. And we, we, we very seldom get beyond sensation into, into any, anything that's really essential. And I think it's because we're afraid if we ever get past, if we ever get past this little shallow uh, thing that we're playing out, that we're going to find there's nothing under it. I find that that what what parades itself as piety often is nothing but pure uh, 
doubt that it's really agnosticism dressed up in a lot of religious jargon. And so for me, the idea of, it would be very easy for me to say, I think what will really please God is if I don't uh, dance, I don't chew, and I don't go with girls who do. Um, it would be easy to say, oh gee, I, I think what will really please God is if I become an evangelist and convert a thousand people. It's much more difficult, I think, for me to become who I am and who he uniquely created me to be. Because no one else can tell me when I've accomplished that. <clears throat> but that's one of the things that I find beautiful in the book of Revelation when Jesus says that to he who overcomes, I will give him a white stone. And on that stone, there is a name known only to the person who receives it and to me. Significant thing to me there is that there is a name on that stone that is the name that Jesus knows me by. My mother does not know me by that name. My friends don't know me by that name. Nobody in this world, including myself, knows who I really am. And I, I think that when we see ourselves in light of Jesus, and that will only happen when we give up ourselves and begin to seek him wholeheartedly, then we will eventually grow into the person that he meant for us to be. And when we see our name on that stone, we'll go, wow, that's me. How did you know me? Because I couldn't even know myself. For me, that, that's part of the goal of spiritual maturity. It's not to become a rigid, pietistic, uptight. I think one of the things that is, is very threatening to a good many of us is we, we go, if people really knew me, they'd never believe in Jesus. And I kind of want to say, no, that's exactly wrong that people will never come to know Jesus as long as we choose to hide ourselves. That until I can be vulnerable, until I can, and I don't think that that necessarily means that I need to go out and get on the, on, on a, the radio and announce all of my private sins. I, I think that, that I can um, be very honest without be, being um, hurtful to people. You know what I mean is? Um, but I think... Yeah, I think that what will please God is if, if, if I have progressed toward being the person whose name is written on that white stone that he will give me. You know, I've, I've been pretty much around the world and people respond no matter where you're at, they respond the same. That it, at the deepest level, what we all need to know is that, that there is a, there really is a God and that He really is good and that He does love us and that we are accepted by Him, um, that we can be forgiven. Those things are very important to people everywhere. And um, that's, that's why, you know, people are sometimes make a big deal that that I've never done the crossover thing. Someday we'll be called to give account. And um, I don't think our crown will be the music we wrote. I don't think our crown will be the words we wrote. I think it will be uh, how we have built up the body of Christ, how we have torn down walls of suspicion and, and walls of fear, how we have shed light on false doctrines, how we've been encouraging on truth. Those are the things I think and how that affects lives and how, how we made Jesus visible. And I, 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 I've never been tempted to, uh, to write about stuff that I didn't think would help us would, would help because I, I do believe that someday I will die and that there will be a judgment. And I, I'm not afraid of necessarily of going to hell. I, I, I don't think, God would have gone to the lengths that he went to if he, to, to forgive me if he were just going to condemn me in the end. You know what I mean? Is, But I, I, I do think that Jesus talked of judgment as, as being a matter of what did we do with our lives? Did we, did we visit those in prison? Did we give to the poor? 
those kinds of things. And you know what? I used to think it was for the advantage of the people in jail and for those people who were naked and hungry. And now I, I, now I think that, that he asks us to do that not so that they can be saved, but so that we can be. That, that if we want to meet Jesus, it won't be a church, likely. Although I'm a big believer in going to church. Um, I think that when we meet Christ, it will always be somewhere outside the camp. It will always, chances are, be among people who are, have been marginalized, people who have been literally imprisoned. We will meet him where we least expect to. 